Dester's punishment was brutal, but his death brought little satisfaction. The horrors of the Wailing Death could not be undone with his execution. Those that had suffered now turned on each other. They looked for someone to blame, and found it in Dester's closest friend, Fenthic. The letter of the law found him negligent, and he was hanged as a sacrifice to appease the bloodthirsty mob. If any thought the sentence unjust, they remained silent. Duty required all to act as one. It was not the time for divided loyalties. The cult behind Dester's treachery still had to be found. The hunt led to the coastal town of Port Last. From here, the heroes of Neverwinter would continue the search for those behind the Wailing Death, and vengeance would be taken. Hello everybody, this is Sirik1983, and welcome back to Neverwinter Nights, Chapter 2. Alright, so yeah, as you saw there, I attacked on the, uh, I guess the end cutscene, if you were, the transition cutscene between chapters 1 and chapter 2. Um, and the reason I did that is just for a couple of reasons. One, it's, you know, I find it applies equally to, you know, to the events of chapter 2 as much as it applied to the events of chapter 1, so I figured that was appropriate. And also for the sake of the people that have, you know, that uh, watch me play through chapter 1 and don't really feel like going through all 73 videos again, and, and, and uh, yeah, and just, uh, you know, they just... All they have to do is just get a little jog in the memory and remember what happened, and uh, we're good to go. Anyway, so we're in port last, obviously, so, uh, yeah, I guess a couple of things I want to go over through first. They're very important. One is, um, well, the most important one, I would say, is the fact that, you know how in Chapter 1, you know, your henchmen, they, uh, they are here as well. Um, you know, you, you, you learn their stories of why they were in Neverwinter and all that kind of stuff, and it was relatively easy to get their items. Uh, from, you know, from them. Um, chapter 2 is slightly different. Uh, well, yeah, you still go through the tales and all that kind of stuff, but you actually have to treat them nicely. In other words, you have to be a comrade to them. You know, you, you can't, you know, uh, make fun of them, or you can't condemn them, or do anything that would, you know, rub them the wrong way kind of thing. Uh, and, or, and they don't give you any more items, however, they do upgrade the items that they gave you in Chapter 1. So keep that in mind anytime you go into conversations with them, because generally you will have more, you will have a, a wider variety of, uh, you know, uh, conversation directions to take the conversation in uh, so just keep that in mind I'll do my best to make sure uh, you know I choose the right ones and if you, you know, follow along you should be fine also there are uh, another couple of tales uh, that will be added to the list of the henchman tales and uh, well, well we, we know one of them anyways but uh, yeah uh, one of these people will ha will if, if you befriend them if you treat them with respect if they like you uh, I think actually all the tales will be done by by the time I'm level 10. So, you know, I talk to them now at level 8, and then level 9, then level 10, and then they're done. Uh, you definitely want to make sure this person likes you by the time you get to level 10 to get a certain item. And that item will be pretty key in uh, especially Chapter 4 near the end of the game. So just keep that in mind. And, uh, well, I guess, well, let's get started. Let's talk to Lerana. Ah, Kel Davis, you have awoken at last. I feel privileged to finally meet you. The hero of Neverwinter, hero before me. I'm getting ahead of myself. You must excuse me. I'm just so excited to meet you. Welcome to Port Last. I trust you had a safe journey from Neverwinter. My name is Lyrana, and Lady Arabeth has given me the honor of greeting you upon your arrival. It's a pleasure to meet you. Let me say again how much I look up to you. We've all heard of the heroic deeds you performed in Neverwinter and how you saved so many lives from that terrible plague. I know that you must be anxious to speak with Lady Arabeth and begin the search for the cult. She is anxious to speak with you, too. You can find Lady Arabeth and her associate Aaron Gend in the next room near the exit of this building. Please go and see her right away. I wish you well on your quest to find the source of that horrible plague. I am sure that you will be succeed and prove to be a hero once again. Goodbye. Alrighty, well, there you go. We got our own little fan there. Not quite as annoying as the fan from Oblivion, but, you know. <laughs> Alright, oh, got one gold piece. Pretty useless. Well, not really, because, yeah, we will want a lot of a lot of gold by the, for this chapter, but, uh... Alrighty, let's, uh, go, yeah. 
this will probably happen a lot quicker than normal, but uh, yeah, anytime I try to open this door, yeah, without, you know, first doing it, you know, uh, off screen, it really bogs down the computer, but uh, this should be rather quick, though. It's just because there's so many people in here that it has to draw them all at once, and it's, yeah, it, it drops the frame rate for a, for a few seconds, but. Alright, oh, where, where the hell's Arabeth? Oh, there she is. Oh, there you go. Please listen. It is good to see you here in Port Last, my friend. If we are to have any luck in tracking down this strange cult behind the plague, it will be with your aid, I am sure. I do not know how much you have been told about Lord Nash's orders. I shall help you understand whatever I can, certainly. What exactly are Lord Nash's orders? You know, of course, that Dester and... and Fenthic were associated with some manner of religious cult that was behind the Wailing Death in the city. We know so little about this cult, and it would be foolish in the extreme to suppose that, simply because their activities in Neverwinter have been stopped, that they have been defeated. Lord Nasher commands that we track down the headquarters of this cult, and discover their plans, and stop them before another atrocity is committed. Erin Gend, Lord Nasher's spymaster, is here in Port Lass to help us do this, and has brought reports of many strange activities throughout the Northern Lands. It is possible that agents of the cult may be behind some of these activities. If so, we may be able to find them and discover where their base is located. Your aid in this will prove invaluable. How are you feeling? This must be a terrible strain. My strain should not surprise you. My only love lies dead, and while it was my lawful lord who executed him, his true murderers remain beyond my reach. I wish with such fervor that it frightens me to see those allies of Desta pay, to see Tyr visit them with terrible justice. I am a paladin of Tyr, sworn to uphold good and justice, yet somehow I cannot condemn Fenthic in my heart. He meant only to do what he saw was his duty, I am sure of it. It is very sad what happened to him. I am sorry for your loss. I thank you. That is kind of you to say. My own loss seems insignificant, however, compared to Fenthic's disgrace. It... Oh, but I should not be distracting you from your task. My own problems are unimportant and of no interest to you, I am sure. Please, forgive me. No, go on. Tell me what you were going to say. It... It is just that Fenthic's fate could have been mine, or yours, or anyone's. How do you know that the path you walk is the correct one? I have never questioned my faith or my duty before, but neither did Fenthic. I feel... doubt, and I am ashamed to admit it. Perhaps I am merely wallowing in my sorrow. Perhaps I know my path better than I think I do, but I am no longer sure. Is it wrong for me to think such thoughts? Yes, it is. You should pull yourself together. Yes, I... I suppose you are correct. This is getting me nowhere. I should put these questions out of my mind for the time being. The safety of Neverwinter relies on your mission, and my duty regarding that is more than clear. Let us speak of that instead. Do you have any advice for me? I would suggest you speak to Erin Gend, and find out where to focus your efforts in finding evidence of the cult. Alrighty, well, first, we've got some more treasure to take. Alright, six. Can we open this one? One thing you're going to notice is that a lot of the chests, crates, uh, barrels, basically anything you can open for treasure, the majority of it is locked in this chapter, so it's not like chapter one where everything is, you know, free for all pretty much, so uh, keep that in mind. Alright, uh, is that it? I think it is. So, yeah, we've got our all uh, old friends here, Body and I, Lenu, oops, Sharwin, uh, Grimna, Dalen, Tommy, yeah. Alright, let's talk to Aaron. Hail, friend. You were instrumental in ridding Neverwinter of the Wailing Death, I understand. Allow me to congratulate you on a job well done. You have shown yourself to be possessed of remarkable courage and resourcefulness. That is fortuitous, for both these qualities will be needed if you are to complete your mission. But that is not how we should begin. I am known as Aaron Gen, and I have served our Lord Nasher for some time. Hopefully, I may be of similar use to you now. Pleased to meet you. My name is Kel Davis. Indeed. I know who you are. There are many who whisper your name right now. And it is my business to listen to them all. My place lies in the shadows. 
I have many eyes and ears throughout the northern lands. And it is my place to inform Lord Nasher where the Vipers lay in wait. If only I had foreseen the actions of this cult, I could have prevented the disaster. But these men move skillfully out of my sight and hearing. Instead of recriminating myself for my failure, I must do what I can to repair the damage. And that is to offer what information I have to you, so that you may find where this new nest of vipers hides. Erebeth has informed you of where you must search, yes? She has told you of how you may root out these fiends? She said you would explain the details. Unearthing the cult will not be a simple task. What few whispers I have collected, however, have allowed me to narrow your search to this region. It is vital that the cult's exact location be found, and that we are certain any leads we discover are not attempts at deception. Erebeth will not be satisfied until we find at least two separate leads that point to the same locale. That is your task. I do know of one possible lead for you. There has been strange news regarding a series of caves that lie north of Port Last. Investigation may reveal the cult to be hidden there. If not, there are other avenues for you to investigate. The city of Luskin to the north, Neverwinter Wood to the east, and the Wildlands of the South Road. I suggest, however, that looking into the caves first would still be your wisest choice. Tell me about these caves. The caves are in the hills to the north of Port Last, near the Green Griffin Inn. They have long been used by humanoid tribes of orcs, bugbears, and the like. They aren't usually a concern. In recent months, however, I have received word that these various humanoid creatures have been raiding the roads south of Luskin. This would not be unusual, except that the creatures now seem very organized and, I hear, are being led by humans. This leads me to believe the cult may be involved. That will be for you to determine. Just keep this in mind. No matter what you find there, Erebeth will wish two firm leads on the cult's location before she will act. We cannot afford a mistake. Have you a question for me then, my friend? Uh, I would rather talk about something else. Aye. What would you have of me? How did you become a spy, lander, spy master for Lord Nasher? That is a curious question, my friend. Nor does it have a simple answer if the truth be known and is not a tale that I care to often tell. I'd still like to hear the tale. As you wish, my friend. Though I'll not be held responsible should you nod off during the telling of it. Let me see. Perhaps it is best if I ask you a question first. You are a person of great fighting prowess, are you not? How is it that you came into your calling? Was it an accident? Was it born purely of talent? Do you believe you were fated to be what you are? I suppose it was fate. Fate is an odd thing, wouldn't you agree? Crystal clear when behind you, yet evasive and unknowable when before you. I myself started life as a slave in the southern deserts of Kalamshan. Never would I have foreseen that I might become who I am today. I knew of the lush and wild jungles of my homeland, Chult, only through the bedtime tales of my mother. I have never laid eyes upon its shore. My mother was owned by a most vicious and cruel caliph. As a slave child, one learns to stay out of sight and to move silently, lest one be beaten. Moreover, I learned to listen. I listened to the chatter of the servants, the bored talk of the guards. For many, many years, I was the shadow in the Caliph's halls. For all my hiding, however, I proved of no use to anyone but myself. I could not save my mother when the Caliph beat her to death for spilling a tankard of his mead, for instance. That's horrible. Aye, but such is the life of a slave. I was the Caliph's shadow, however, and I blamed myself for not stopping his blow young and foolish as I was. In grief and anger, I stabbed and killed the Caliph, and was subsequently chased into the streets of Kalimpur. What happened to you then? I fled into the shadows of the city, and was not alone there. 
I found many who I will call allies and not friends, for we acted in unison only to survive. The law pursued me, so always I remained hidden and listened as I once had. The fact that I was a thief to remain alive did not help, and eventually, even the shadows of the city were no longer safe for me. I sought passage out of the city, and eventually a captain took pity on me and gave me a position aboard his ship. Perhaps you have heard of Randall the Red? I think so. You became a pirate? Randall the Red deserved his reputation as a violent and cunning pirate of the Sword Coast. While I joined his crew, I was not a pirate as you think of it. I was not fond of drink as the other sailors were, and instead spent my time at each port making new contacts and listening. Over the years, Randall grew to depend on my skill. He gave me gold to establish informants throughout the coast, and I heard news the instant it happened. It was I who kept Randall safe and one step ahead of his pursuers, for always would I know before the chase was on us. How did you feel, being a pirate? I was not truly a pirate. I was his master of spies, though I did not put a name to what I did. And while Randall was indeed a pirate, he was an easy man to like. I was not fond of the looting and pillaging Randall indulged in, and did my best to subtly steer him away from the worst of it. Randall knew what I was doing, and permitted it only because I was otherwise invaluable to him. He cared not if I cringed and returned to cheat when the crew plied the worst of their bloody trade. As the years passed, I came into a certain amount of my own fame along the Sword Coast. My life was my life, and I was satisfied with it, and discharged my duty as best I knew. It was not until I encountered Lord Nasher that my life would change forever. That, however, is another tale. Ask me of it sometime, my friend. Thank you for telling me. And thank you for listening. As I said, it is not a tale I tell often. Back to more important matters. Is there something you needed? Uh, I'll be going. Aye, I shall hope that the gods keep you safe, my friend. All right, and one more thing about these uh, tales. Uh, you need, in order for this to actually work, you need to be male. It will not work if you're female. So uh, just keep that in mind. That's one of the big reasons why I chose a male character than my usual, you know, choosing female. You know, but uh, yeah, just keep that in mind if you're female. And I guess it, I guess whatever you choose doesn't really matter that much. But uh, anyways. Anyways, uh, so yeah, I guess that's all the time I have for this episode, so the next episode, well, we've got all our uh, henchmen here, so I guess, well, we better talk to them and find out what they've been up to. This is Sirik1983 signing off. Thank you for watching, and have a good one.